Good morning. Welcome to our service this morning as we come to praise and to worship the Lord. Uh, you have your notice sheets as you came in. Uh, there was something else uh, that you can get on the way out. These are, once again, for your information, but also to give as an invitation so this is to the cattle service that's to take place next Sunday evening uh, in the Seaboard Hall at 5 p.m. So there will be no service here, just in the Seaboard Hall, our community cattle service. So there's loads of these invitation cards at that door and at this door. As you come through for tea and coffee, you're most welcome to come through after the service and enjoy a time together. Uh, please pick any amount of them up if you want and uh, pray over who you can invite to come along to our cattle service next Sunday evening. The children will be singing again at that service. There'll be lots of carols for us all to sing, and I'll be leading uh, the worship that evening as well. So pick up one of these on your way out uh, this morning. Let's sing together. We're going to uh, sing in Psalm 89 in the Scottish Psalter. Psalm 89. It's on page 345. We're going to sing from verse 13 to 18. Thou hast an arm that's full of power. Thy hand is great in might, and thy right hand exceedingly exalted is in height. Psalm 89 from verse 13. We'll stand and sing to God's praise. Thou hast an arm that's full of Amen. 
Let's pray together. Lord, you are our almighty King. You are the one who is powerful. You are the one who is mighty. And we come today to worship our mighty God. We pray, Lord, that we would spend time today thinking about you, thinking about who you are and what you have done and how you work and have worked in all of our lives. Our prayer is that all of us here would know you as our friend, as our Savior through Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we pray thanking you for this new day and new opportunity to come and to worship you as a congregation. We pray that as we meet this morning and again, Lord willing, tonight, that you would draw near to us and bless us as we do so. Be with the children. We thank you for them. We thank you for our special time with them over this past week in their school. And we pray that as we speak to them now, once again, uh, Lord, we would have uh, the opportunity to sow the seed into their heart and that you, Lord, would be working in each of their lives. And we pray that as they go through to Sunday school and creche, that you would be with them and their teachers and that the message, the story of the Bible would continually be fed to them. Forgive us, go with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, let me invite the children to come down to the front and we'll uh, speak together. Good. Okay, let me see. Do I look the same today? Do I look the same as I did all week this week? Anything different? Fraser? Just the same. Good. Maybe you didn't recognize me this week then, did you? Did you know that I was in your school this week? Did you know that some of the other grown-ups from, from church were in your school this week? And were they dressed in their normal clothes? No. Who's going to tell me what they were doing? Anybody know? Kai. Uh, when we were just asking the story of Jesus' birth. Yeah, absolutely. We were trying to tell you the story of Jesus' birth. So there was, uh, so some of these grown-ups don't know what happened in your school this week. So it would be good if you guys told them a wee bit. So there was how many different uh, stalls or I don't know what the word is, that you had to go to. How many different stations did you have to go to? Can you hear? Um, yeah, well done. Three. So what about the one I was at, if you recognized me? What was that one? Fraser? Station one. Yeah, and what happened at station one? Yeah, we played a video which had a story and also... Myself, Joseph, and Mary were telling you the story of how Jesus was born. So what were we in when we were standing there at Station 1? What were we standing in, Kai? A shed. Yeah. And where, so where was Jesus? What, what do we think Jesus was born in? Hannah, sorry. Stable, yeah. So that's Station 1. We were in the stable, Mary and Joseph. And what about Station 2? So there was lots of hilarity and shouting and running going on at Station 2. Fraser? Um, the yeah. 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 So you had a whole pile of sheep, which were balloons. They had black faces and white faces. And you had to get the black faces into one pen and the white faces into another. Uh, and so what were the shepherds, what happened to the shepherds in the story of Jesus? Did they just stay with their sheep all night or what happened? Hannah? No, they walked their sheep. 
Ja. Ja, absolut. They left their sheep to go to Bethlehem and find baby Jesus. Now, there was one last station that you went to. Anybody else remember? Can you hear? The wise men, yeah. And what happened? I never actually got into that tent. What happened inside that tent? Okay, Josh, sorry, go for it if not spoken. Yeah, yeah, you had a box, and there was different. You had to smell something, didn't you? There was the, some of the presents that the wise men brought. Was there, Hannah? Gold, yeah. I never got any of that gold. I saw Josh had lots of the gold. Gold, the chocolate coins. <laughs> and then, what are the other two? Anybody remember? Lachlan? A stinky box, yeah. <laughs> gold, frankincense, and what was the last one? Myrrh. Myrrh, well done, good. And so, what did the wise men do in the story of Jesus? Okay, good. Well done. Good job. So did you enjoy us coming to your school this week? Or did you wish you were doing maths instead? Maths. You wanted to do maths. Good. <laughs> Remember that next year. Great guy. Well, it was really good fun for us to do as well. And uh, we really enjoyed coming in. And hopefully we'll be back. And see everything that we were teaching you there about Jesus being born into the world I was, today, we're going to think about that as I speak here in church, and we're certainly going to be thinking about that over the next few weeks as you come to the cattle service next week, next Sunday night. And today we're going to talk about Jesus. One of the names Jesus had was Mighty God, Mighty God. And it made me think of this. Anybody, you guys will not know who this is. Do you actually, Jack? Jack? Wow, that's so cool. This is the Power Rangers. So, I used to think the Power Rangers were the coolest thing ever. And so, when, for Christmas, I used to want more action figures like the Power Rangers. And want to, me and my brothers would have one each and we would fight either each other or fight something else. Because the Power Rangers did some amazing things. They stopped pollution in the world. They intercepted this pig that was going to eat everything in the world. They did some amazing, they had some great power and might. They were the mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Boys, you okay? And that's the point. They looked like just young kids. They looked like teenagers. And then they changed into the Power Rangers. And see when you see baby Jesus in that stable, when you saw him in in my station, you may think, well, He's not going to do, he doesn't look very mighty or powerful. And yet Jesus is the one who has saved the world from all of their sins. He has saved us. He is is real. He has real power, unlike the power rangers. But Jesus, that baby Jesus, has all the might and all the power to help you today and to save you from your sins. Okay, guys, thank you. Let's uh, pray together. (laughs) And we'll clasp our hands and we'll close our eyes, okay? So let's pray. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We'll sing again in Psalm 45, in the Sing Psalms, Psalm 45. So on page 56, we'll sing from verse 1 to 6, a noble theme inspires my heart with verses for the king, 
My tongue's a skillful writer's pen, composing lines to sing. Psalm 45 will stand and sing to God's praise. Turn with me in your uh, Bibles to Luke chapter 2. We continue our own series of uh, Christmas unwrapped, Christ unwrapped in Isaiah chapter 9, but we're going to read uh, Luke chapter 2, just the account of uh, the birth of Jesus. Page 1027, Luke chapter 2, and from the beginning, let's hear the word of God. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, 
because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Amen. This is the Word of God. Let's uh, bow together in a word of prayer just now. Lord, as these uh, shepherds went and told others about what they had seen, as they told them, about Jesus who had been born. We see the reaction, we hear the reaction of these people. They were amazed and they believed. As we talk today, as we've spoken to the children this week, as we talk and preach the word of God about Jesus being born in that stable, we pray that the reaction would be identical, that those here would be amazed and believe that they would believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. We may ask the questions, how can this baby help us? How can he save me? How can he do anything? He's just a baby. And yet, Lord, as we come to ponder and to study your word today, May we find the answers to these questions as we find them as we study Isaiah 9 and verse 6, that this baby shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. And that is who you are. You are the Mighty God. Amazing statement that this baby, Jesus, is God. Amazing to know that our God is not just like all the others who claim to be God, but our God is mighty. He is mighty to save. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. And so, Lord, as we ponder these things this morning, We pray that you indeed would save through your might today. Draw near to us as we seek to draw near to you in our time of worship. And we do rejoice for the opportunity that we had this week to be in Hilton School, to speak to every pupil to share with them in an interactive way the story of the gospel, that Jesus Christ has been born through Mary and Joseph's 
account and the shepherds and the wise men. And Lord, we pray that as we were reiterating to them that this baby is Jesus. He is the Son of God, and He has come to save the world from their sins. We pray that our young people would know this and believe this, and that you, Lord, would come personally into their hearts, that they would have a personal relationship with you, their God. We thank you for the staff who are present throughout the week as well. And we pray, Lord, that as they listened, as they would have hopefully thought and pondered these things for themselves, that as they saw even the effort that this church has made over the past week to get past weeks to get all this together for the church here who have been praying for this opportunity to come. Lord, we just thank you for a praying people, a people who see the 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 worth of going into the schools and having a week like we did this week. We pray, Lord, for these teachers. Thank you for their role and the responsibility they have with our children. We pray that you would be with them in their own work, with their own families, and Lord, that they too uh, would truly consider this baby Jesus, this man Jesus, this God Jesus, who can save them from their own sins. Lord, we thank you for all of the schools that we have involvement in. We look forward over the next week or two to be at their end of term concerts or, 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 or assemblies. Lord, help us as we get that opportunity, perhaps with parents there too, able to share uh, the good news of Jesus. Lord, we pray on then for other congregations throughout our denomination. We pray for Mull and Call, small congregations on these rural islands. We thank you for their uh, connection to Oban Free Church and able to have online services with them. Uh, just help them, help them to feel part of the, uh, of the congregations that they are in and the ones that are around them and just strengthen them uh, through these days. And we thank you for uh, Ian Morrison being there in Oban and help him as he seeks to minister uh, to these congregations. So Lord, as we come to consider you, the mighty God, uh, we see that there are people, there are people in uh, our own lives, we see them in the newspapers and the news who perhaps would consider themselves to be powerful, to have might, and yet it all pales into insignificance compared to our mighty God. So let us consider you and let us uh, spend time with you over these next few moments as we continue in worship. Forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We sing again before we uh, turn to this passage, or to Isaiah 9, uh, Psalm 50, in the Sing Psalms. It's on page 66, and we're going to sing from verse 1 to, 1 to 9. Uh, the Lord, the Mighty One, is God alone. He speaks and summons all the earth abroad, from rising of the sun to where it sets. From Zion's perfect beauty shines our God. Let's stand and sing to his praise. <clears throat> the Lord, the mighty one is God
Just for your information as well, uh, there will be uh, four Christmas devotional videos going out on our social media and website uh, starting tomorrow at 7 p.m., so Monday and Friday, uh, both this week and next week. Uh, so you can follow them and share them if you would uh, as well. Um, so starting tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, on all of the social media platforms. Well, seeking God's help, let's turn then uh, to Isaiah chapter 9. So we'll turn back to the Old Testament and see the verse that we're uh, focusing on in our series in the lead up to Christmas, Isaiah 9 and verse 6. So it's on page 693 of uh, your Bibles. <clears throat> it says, For to us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called... Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What do you think Harry and Meghan, Cristiano Ronaldo and Lord Alan Sugar all have in common? Power. Whether to cause a media storm or to get a new club to play for, or to hire and fire at will. Men and women like these have power to influence their immediate contexts to some extent for some limited amount of time. Now, whether you are royalty or rich, whether you are an athlete or businessman, you can think you hold all of the cards but ultimately, unlimited power lies with our mighty God. Isaiah was looking forward to Christmas when he wrote this book. And we are unwrapping Christmas in Isaiah chapter 9 as we come to the second name given to describe Jesus. This is Christ unwrapped. Our mighty God was literally lying there in the stable as Jesus was born into the world. He didn't look very powerful or very mighty, but this was the king, the most powerful man to ever walk on this earth. Alistair began unwrapping Christmas last week with the first name describing Jesus. Many of us may need the help of a counselor, but all of us need the help of our wonderful counselor. Today we're going to consider Jesus as mighty God from the humble setting of the stable how can this baby help us? How can he help you in the reality of your life's circumstances? So I want to just consider the words we have from the perspective of the stable. The baby is God and the baby is mighty. So the baby is God and the baby is mighty. Let's think, first of all, then, that the baby is God. Uh, people often joke that the minister only works one day a week. Or they may be more polite and phrase their puzzlement as a question, what do you do Monday to Saturday? Well, if you asked me that question this week, I would have had to tell you that for a good chunk of it, 
I was dressed as Joseph, standing in a stable with the baby lying beside me in a feeding trough. The Christmas story points to a baby born in Bethlehem. We sing carols about this miracle. We go into schools dressed up as Mary and Joseph, the wise men and the shepherds. We read, speak, and even hear preach that this baby was born. However, as great as that is, we heard last week that this baby is the wonderful counselor and he would do great things. That this wonderful counselor would dispel the darkness, ease your despair, and remove your gloom. But is that possible? He's just a baby. It's helpful to know that uh, in the Hebrew that this is originally uh, written in, unlike here in the English, that uh, the word for God actually comes first. We have mighty God. It appears as God mighty in the original. Jesus, we are being told here, is God That's an extraordinary claim that you may not believe this morning, that you may take for granted this morning. It's an extraordinary claim when you think about it. Because as we've just said, and as this verse says at the beginning of verse 6, this mighty God is a child that will be born. There's no question that the one upon whose shoulders rests the government is a human being. He was born. Mary's child grew in her womb just like any other child. But this child changed everything. He changes everything. In Jesus, it's described here in verse 6, he's described as the mighty God. And Jesus himself, in his life and ministry, he claimed to be God. In John 5, he said that all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. At the close of his sermon on the Good Shepherd, Jesus said, I and my Father are one. The people present, they understood this statement of Jesus that he was claiming to be God. And they showed that they understood because they picked up stones to throw at him and kill him for such an outlandish claim that he is saying that he is equal to the Father. Near the close of his public ministry, just before his death on the cross, Jesus cried out, when a man believes in me, he does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. When he looks at me, he sees the one who sent me. And he told Philip, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. In plain, simple language, Jesus claimed to be God, and those who knew him affirmed him as God. Here's the point. Jesus the baby boy born in this completely unremarkable way to this unremarkable family, this man with a normal human nature, the same nature we share, this same child is also the one and only Son of God. One with the Father and the Holy Spirit before all time. He is the second person of the Holy Trinity He is one God in three persons, forever exalted in heaven. The child who was born in the manger, the son who was given, is the mighty God. And that that changes everything. It changes everything for you. The baby born that first Christmas is... God become flesh, dwelling among us. And here is the message for Christmas. Only this can speak peace to your troubled hearts. 
in whatever way you're troubled this morning. Your God came for you. He didn't send someone else. He came himself in pursuit of you to seek and to save the lost. So while we are all busy decking the halls and attending Christmas parties and concerts and or decorating the tree in the, in the midst of whatever challenges or difficulties are in your life, you can cry to him. And you can know you are speaking to the one who came down in pursuit of you. As we did Christmas unwrapped with the children this week, we asked them, who who appeared? Do you know who appeared to Mary? He said, an angel. And to Joseph in the dream when he was worried and sad, who appeared? Do you know who appeared? An angel. But it's not an angel who's pursued you. It's God himself who's pursuing you. Jesus has come because he loves you. Do you need to hear that again? He loves you. That's why he came. You are loved with an everlasting love. You are loved with a steadfast love. I was reading in Psalm 107 this morning. And it says at the end of that psalm, consider the steadfast love of the Lord. Do that today. Consider the steadfast love of the Lord. God so loved the world. He so loved you that he didn't send a representative. He gave his one and only son. What a gift he gave his son. He loved you so much that he gave him for you. If you're weak, weary today, sore or sad, aware of your sin, ashamed, then listen to the good news this Christmas. You're loved. You are loved. God loves you. The birth of Mary's boy is all the proof that you should need. God himself has come for you in Jesus Christ. He himself has come in pursuit of you to make you his. Dane Ortland, in his book, Gentle and Lowly, said, If God sent his own son to walk through the valley of condemnation, rejection, and hell, you can trust him as you walk through your own valley on your way to heaven. He hasn't left you to just muddle through life by yourself. The baby of Bethlehem is the Lord your God who came down in pursuit of you. The baby is God. But secondly, the baby is mighty. The baby is God, and secondly, the baby is mighty. Now, you may not be aware, you may, but this part of Isaiah, Israel has just suffered military defeat by their Assyrian enemies. And they're now in a mess, and they are now in hardships, and they're now in oppression, as Alistair made clear uh, last week. They need one who is mighty in order to save them. But the promise was for a child. What can a child do to help them? Uh, While uh, we celebrate our eight-month-old's achievements as first-time parents holding her head up or eating her food or pulling herself up. 
She is hardly displaying the mighty power which is needed to heal broken hearts. Lift up not just yourself, but the downcast, and ultimately save the world from their sins. So how can this baby, even the baby Jesus, be mighty? The mighty Morphin Power Rangers, as I explained briefly to the children, uh, they pulled me in as a child with what they could do and overcome. The ordinary, seemingly, performing the extraordinary. You can surely claim to have a better superhero than these teenagers in costumes, but whoever you once adored, they pale into insignificance with our mighty God. Mighty means power, hero, and even warrior. So you could translate it this way. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Warrior God. Why did, why did God become man? Why was Jesus born in that stable? God became man. Christ was born to fight for you to fight for you. That's what this means. He came to fight. So in some ways, the Christmas story isn't really all cute and cozy, silent nights. Let's not forget that what's really going on in this scene, the birth of Jesus, is the opening conflict between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. If you're at all familiar with the gospel accounts and the life of Christ then you'll have noticed that this very spiritual conflict rages wherever Jesus goes. There's an outpouring of demonic activity during Jesus' earthly ministry. And yet, if you look carefully, you will see in every confrontation, beginning with his temptation in the wilderness by Satan, and on into the expulsion of the powers of evil from demonized people, what happens? Jesus again and again triumphs in every preliminary skirmish during his earthly ministry. Jesus is the victor. Jesus showed his right to be recognized as the mighty God by demonstrating his power over nature his power over disease, his power over the demons, and his power over sin. Throughout the course of his public life, Christ revealed his divine might in ways that not only were undeniable, but also intentional proofs of his claim to be God. But of course, the satanic onslaught that came against our Savior, reached its summit, its pinnacle in his betrayal and his rest, his torture and his crucifixion. This was the climactic battle. This is the final showdown where there the ancient serpent that we read of all the way back in Genesis chapter 3 finally sinks his fangs deeply into Christ, and as the venom of satanic weakness, sorry, satanic wickedness, exacts from Jesus its terrible price, it looks like defeat. It looks like it's over. Every other engagement in the war has been victory. He calmed the storm. He removed the demon. He healed the lame man. But now on the cross, it looks like it's over. Darkness covers the earth. And Jesus cries in dereliction and abandonment, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It looks like defeat, doesn't it? you noticed when uh, the star shone in the sky for uh, the shepherds to come 
uh, or the sky lit up for the shepherds and, uh, and then for the wise men. To come and see this baby born in the manger, the midnight was made to look like midday. But now when Jesus is on the cross, midday is made to look like midnight. As it seems that the baby, now the man Jesus, has been defeated. But what appears to be tragic failure is in fact the final victory. Why was Jesus born? What is Christmas about? It's really about the cross much more than it is actually about the manger. It's really about the cross. Call him Jesus, Mary and Joseph were instructed, because he will, what? Save his people from their sins. This is what he came to do. He was born for the cross. There the battle was joined and Christ's victory was accomplished. He is our mighty hero, warrior God who fought for us and laid down his life for us. And Paul will write later in Colossians 2, and having dis- this is talking about Jesus, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them on the cross. It was a display of Jesus' final victory, not his ultimate defeat. So the baby was God, and that baby was mighty God. But you know, although Christmas can be uh, decorated nicely with images of warm fires in our heads, carols singing, mince pies, yet no matter how many uh, fairy lights are hung up or tinsel is draped around your home, you know that it cannot ultimately uh, conceal the difficulty or challenges or reality of life that you face day in and day out. I'd be the last to tell you not to bother with the tinsel and lights, but the point is life is hard. And we cannot ultimately hide from it or run from it on that day or for these weeks leading up to Christmas. But Jesus says, take heart. I have overcome the world. His first words, these were not his first words in the cradle, but they were his last words on the cross. It is finished. I've won. I've engaged in the climactic battle and I have triumphed. I've secured the victory. Take heart in your struggle with sin, sorrow, and suffering. Take heart in your fears and your frustrations. Take heart when whatever trouble or tribulation is in your life. The world is going to hurt you. You're going to be tripped up by your sin. But Jesus says, I have fought for you, and I have triumphed. The world cannot touch you. Satan will not snatch you from his hand, and sin will never ultimately condemn you. If this baby, if Jesus is your God, your mighty God, Jesus has overcome. Today it may be that you are here with whatever situations in your mind and heart, feeling weary or wounded, grieving, guilty, and wanting help. There is help for you in Jesus Christ, who is the wonderful counselor, who is the mighty God. Let me urge you to come to him and to find him for yourself. As a teenage Christian, we would spend, I'd be joined by uh, maybe one to 200 other relatively young people 
in our town hall at 8 p.m. on a Sunday night. We would go and uh, there would be a short talk, but then there would be some singing of different praise songs. And this song stayed with me. I loved it. And perhaps uh, as I come to read it more and more, uh, the words are very appropriate for us today. Because whatever is your situation, ultimately, Jesus has come to save you from your sins. If you still need Jesus to save you from your sins, that's your first priority. But Christian, too, in your life, in your situations, remember your God is mighty. Hear the words, everyone needs compassion. Everyone needs compassion. A love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Let's pray together. Mighty God, we pray to you. We thank you that you are our God and you are the one who is powerful. You are the warrior who has fought for us and who has been victorious. We pray that every person here would receive the compassion and the forgiveness that you offer. For you are mighty to save. And today, Lord, we pray for your might to save the sinners who are here this morning. As you have saved us, many sinners, who testify of your love this morning too. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing Psalm 2 in the Sing Psalms to conclude. We'll sing from verse 6 to the end. The Lord has made it known to them, my chosen king I have installed on Zion, my own holy hill. He is the one whom I have called. Psalm 2 from verse 6, we'll stand and sing to God's praise. The Lord has made it known to them, my chosen King, I have installed
may grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you, both now and forevermore. Amen.